Hey there everybody, it's Jeremy rolling with the Five Pencil Method team and I'm back again today for part two of Daryl's series on drawing landscapes. In the last video, Daryl left off talking a little bit about perspective and how perspective can change the way that we perceive nature and the landscapes around us. So today, Daryl's going to actually start drawing and start to demonstrate some of these visual principles that you'll find in all landscapes. So you're not going to want to miss it. There's a lot of good stuff to learn. Hey, glad to have this opportunity to continue uh, talking about some of the things to take in consideration when you're drawing a scene. And I think we were touching on uh, you know, a number of factors, uh, the clean edges versus contours and value. And, and, uh, and then we got in a little bit about perspective. And perspective is uh, something that uh, maybe some of you may not really realize is in everything you see. One of those things, again, our, our eyes and our minds are, are trying to assess distance, and it does that so automatically we don't even have to think about it. So we're looking past something. The clean edges is where that comes in uh, well, and uh, so we know where the door frame is and the yard is out uh, past that. Uh, we have values that help us separate things, and uh, sometimes uh, something is coming out from behind something else a little darker because it's getting less light, and sometimes it may be a little a little lighter because of the fact that we're looking through uh, atmosphere. So when we look at mountains, often we'll see them get lighter and lighter and lighter as they go off in the distance. And uh, and then we were talking about perspective yesterday with you know things like fence posts and uh, those kinds of obvious displays of perspective, where every time you see the next fence post that's going away from you, it's going to be a little smaller, and uh, and not only uh, smaller but um, uh, thinner, and uh, well, I guess that goes in smaller, doesn't it? Uh, shorter, um, and yet uh, if we're looking from a, a little bit above as we are, as we stand there, uh, our eyes are uh, not on the ground level, and so we have a chance to sometimes look down on something and see uh, a perspective that way too, the angles that uh, uh, continue on uh, towards that horizon, that vanishing point. A vanishing point is like if you're going down the road and uh, some of you have probably been on a straight road and see it go so far that it basically comes down the end of the road comes down to just a very small single line almost uh, just a point uh, because it's maybe 25 30 miles away if you've ever had a chance to uh, uh, see that happen it's it's just something to take note and realize that it's the same thing with everything you look at whether it's a face or uh, a box or a house, uh, your mailbox, uh, an item on your desk or whatever, it's all the same. Everything is going to always be a little bit farther, uh, as it's a little bit farther, a little smaller and a little narrower, smaller in every way. So uh, we have to be able to show that, otherwise it just does not look right. Uh, I think we were looking at uh, at this one yesterday and uh, and talking about how uh, you know, this is going up over a knoll, and it comes, you know, not only are the fence posts getting smaller, but it's it's going over and out of our view because we have this little bit of a knoll in the pasture. And so we want to always be watching for what what is the reason that something is disappearing from my view or getting smaller. And try as best we can to uh, maybe show an edge to value here, even though it's slight, and uh, have that opportunity to show there's another element beyond. Uh, and and then as I was looking through these pictures again with the perspective in mind, uh, I thought it was interesting because even in something like this, we have uh, perspective at play. And uh, I thought maybe uh, it'd be good just to point it out. And, and that's the fun part. If you take a look at whatever you're around, see if you can identify it. Uh, if, it if it's the other end of your couch, it's getting smaller. If it's the, uh, well, anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, so look at this, even though there's a central point here where the waves are, and I realize that the, the uh, rock could be uh, contoured to a degree, you'll still see a pattern here where it looks like everything is coming towards us and it's all coming from a source uh, that's in the distance. And so you see a pattern to all of the, uh, uh, the uh, water 
as it's uh, fragmenting as it goes across this rock. And you see that it's all going like spokes of a wheel because it's all pointing towards a vanishing point. And, uh, and so there's uh, many things in play here too. Uh, this, along with this water over here, uh, as we see the waves getting closer, you'll see that there's more of a space between each wave. And as it keeps going and keeps going, it goes out even. So it's just basically just an even value. It's, it's not even discernible where there's waves, maybe just a slight indication, but they get so close together that it just becomes a tone. And so uh, we have uh, perspective and play there too, even though maybe sometimes we don't really uh, think about that. Uh, we have uh, perspective in, in a scene like this where we see the other end. Well, there's indicators, the other end of the meadow or whatever. We see little indicators that probably, you know, kind of, we just kind of take for granted. We see the trees larger as they come towards us. Uh, we see, uh, you know, possibly, uh, well, we see it at play here. Everything's going to go towards this point. Even the reflection in the water is going to uh, reflect what we're seeing, you know, above the water. And if we were going to draw, uh, you know, this scene, and we wanted to do something like put ripples in it, uh, then uh, you could do something very simple. This is a simple trick. Uh, maybe I've shown you before. I don't know, but it doesn't hurt. You just put a circle on a piece of paper if you want to get an idea, and then turn this and keep tilting it and tilting it until it matches up with the level of your water. And then you'll have an idea of what kind of an ellipse to make, you know, for your uh, circles, uh, you know, as they're going off into the distance. Each circle, like in the waves, are going to get closer together in that far part of the rings. And as they come closer, the spaces between the ripples will get wider, just like in the waves on that uh, uh, picture of the ocean. And uh, and so anyway, I thought maybe we could go ahead and just quickly uh, illustrate something. It won't be real fancy, but um, let's take this picture, for instance, and let's just go ahead and see if we can incorporate some of the elements that we've talked about. Uh, you know, uh, you know, illustrating distance in maybe two or three different ways. We can show that there is an edge and there's a different value past a certain point as it goes up and over the knoll. Uh, we can show value that's different than it is in the pasture here. The mountains are going to be a little different value. Uh, we can show perspective, which is what we're uh, addressing right now anyway, at least for a little bit. See if we can put some of these elements together and and maybe build something uh, that if you want, it could be very, I mean, if, if you could, if you were drawing this at home or something, uh, you could take this element and, uh, and, you know, recognizing some of these things uh, try and draw it very similar, or you can use the principles and even modify it, uh, making it into something that's maybe a little more ideal for what you're imagining in your mind and wanting to communicate on paper. So see if I can get this all in the paper. Sometimes that's a little difficult, but let's just go ahead and make a horizon line here. Uh, well, I, I'm just going to make a horizon line to the uh, meadow, and we see it's kind of interesting that it's a little bit of a diagonal and it's coming down a knoll, and then it comes down to the road, and and then there's uh, the coming up the other bank, possibly, and then continuing on down the hill. But I think this is kind of uh, interesting in that the road uh, obviously is going to go over an edge, and there's something past it. And so then, uh, as we come uh, here, we can take into consideration that this road is probably going to have an up and down, it's undulating a little bit. And uh, and maybe I'll make this a little bit more of a perspective, seeing as that, that's how what we're, we're dealing with anyway. So even in that short distance, we're going to see it getting narrower, you know, from this point to that point. Now let's, let's go ahead and, and put this, it's in the picture, right in here, if you can see it. But anyway, uh, there's a place where this goes over a little bit of a, uh, you know, a high place in the road and then goes down as we so often will have, you know, the ups and downs and undulations of a road. But this gives us an opportunity to create distance again. As we come over here, now that it's in our view again, we had a space in here where it was, uh, you know, in the distance. And, uh, and now we can maybe come back with, uh, 
this coming this way and really showing uh, you know a, a little bit more of a severe perspective. I hate to just draw a line if I'm going to keep doing this because I want to you know show my my grass and I'm also uh, you know being very uh, general with my uh, you know my pencil and also I'm using a 4B which I, it, it, there's sometimes when I might use a 4B but most of the time it's a pencil I reserve because I'd like to be able to have an opportunity for all my range of values. But you'll see that this is getting uh, far more, uh, you know, wider as we come closer and closer to where we're standing as we're looking at this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these fence posts. These fence posts, let's see, they're going to be very tiny, probably closer together as they're going into the distance. And maybe, you know, just for the sake of illustration, we'll, we'll make them uh, a little bit exaggerated. This looks like they're probably a little closer than I, I would like, but let's go ahead and make this one short because it's down behind this knoll. And, and uh, as it's coming up over here, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit taller and a little bit taller and a, and a little bit taller and maybe wider. Uh, space in between and and so then we have this is going to be uh, you know taller and with a wider space in between and we're using principles more than we are uh, actual uh, you know factual you know measurements and things but still it makes it kind of interesting because we have uh, the goal of having some real uh, uh, perspective here and then as this is going around the corner well then I'm going to have you know, these fence posts are, are going to be probably in front of each other almost, almost no spaces in between. And, uh, yeah, I didn't take in consideration that knoll. So let's just, let's just see if I can do it. It's kind of hard with this 4B pencil because it's so dark. Uh, I like to be able to use my whole uh, set of pencils so that I can make sure that I can, uh, you know, have again all the different values, and that, and if you can utilize your pencils as much as possible, it makes it so much easier, you know, to uh, get depth and contour when you have all the gradations available to you. So let's go ahead and these fence posts don't even have to all be exactly the same height. Uh, maybe they're you know, been split from logs in the forest, and they uh, just have. Uh, that homegrown quality here. But now let's go ahead and get one that's quite a bit more. I'm going to have to catch up to the other side. I want to take that in consideration too. But here we now have an opportunity to have our um, perspective with the fence post. I'm going to do this over again too. I'm going to take the bottom of this off and I'm going to put the edge of this road out a little bit. You can see we have some grass and we have it coming out here a little bit and kind of add a natural edge to the road. And, and those are things, too, that I can, I can use as an opportunity to show distance, too, as I put some grass blades and some of the weeds and whatever's out there, you know, in front of the next thing and the next thing by showing different values and, and later on coming in and actually creating uh, some of the the value that is going to allow us to push something back and pull something forward. I can do that with my eraser too, but this is kind of, kind of a, at least gives us a little bit more of a natural, uh, you know, edge to the road. Maybe we have the weeds just coming right out to the edge. This is way out in the country. And, uh, and then even around the fence post, I, I don't have to show a fence post that shows the bottom. I can hide them. Uh, you know, the bottoms of them and the weeds. So everything that you put down here can actually be, uh, you know, an opportunity for you to establish the principles that we have distance in effect in all parts of our drawing. So then let's go ahead and, and uh, you know, just sketch in a, a little bit of the mountain here. Let's, let's take a, it doesn't have to be in exactly the same place. Uh, let's just go... Have fun, like, like uh, let's put a happy mountain in here, like uh, Bob Ross used to do all the time. 
And this one has trees on it, so I'm going to kind of allow for that. Many ways that I could go ahead and make sure that this has a different texture or an edge on it than, uh, than the one that we're uh, looking next to it, which is more rocks, more this jagged, you know, areas here. And then uh, uh, maybe let's make this uh, these trees. I'm using more of the side of my pencil than I normally do too, but let's go ahead and make these trees as they're a little bit darker. Darker forest. Going right down to that edge of the road. We just, we, we're going down over the road, so uh, we're going to have an edge to value here. Showing a tone. So now we have two things. We have value. We have a few clean edges developing here. And if you're out in your car and you see a scene like this and you want to just sketch the concept or something, it's, it's uh, kind of fun to be able to uh, take those things in consideration, not only so that you can describe the scene, but you can document it and go back and understand exactly what in the world you drew. If you showed somebody, they would immediately have a lot easier time uh, seeing the distance not only because we're using clean edges, but there's different values too. So let's go ahead and put a little value in this. It's kind of kind of hard to do with just my 4B, but I want to make sure you can see it on here. So I, I hope you I hope it's dark enough that you can see some of that. With a very soft pencil, it's kind of nice too to be able to take advantage of the fact that there's a lot of graphite going on here and I'm putting it on very lightly so I can remove anything I want to. I can actually just sweep it off there so I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, if I want to make a change that I can't do it. In fact, this, this is the time that if you wanted to, you could even use something like a cotton ball. I don't like to use tortillions, as many of you know, because tortillions have a tendency to alter uh, and everything starts looking the same after a while. Uh, alter the uh, the texture of the paper and mash down that valuable tooth. The more tooth you have, lo the longer it, you maintain it on your paper, the easier it's going to be to show all the different values and to still maintain some detail clear down towards the finish of your drawing. So this is something that uh, if I refine it a little bit down here, I'm going to make sure that I have a nice clean edge and I want my pasture to be a little bit different value. Now when I come up with my pasture, I mean I can break that up too because there's all kinds of different variations in here. I can I can take a, you know, a few little places, naturally be a little smaller stroke uh, than I might put in the foreground because uh, grass and everything won't be quite as big as it would be here where I might see a little bit more detail but we can help uh, to break some of this up uh, any way we want to. And then we have the opportunity for trees as well. Now, um, let's go ahead and, and I'm going to put a little bit more value in here and try to make it a different texture than this <clears throat> so that we have kind of a rock uh, opportunity. And if anything got darker, uh, than I want, especially at any particular stage in my drawing, uh, because I put it down so lightly, I can just tap it right back off, and that way have even one more opportunity to regulate the values in my drawing. Now, if I have uh, some of these other mountains, like are in here, and I want to just play around by putting a different, a uh, different bunch of mountains in here, maybe there's one in the distance here, then this could be a little lighter value than this one. I always like to I like to try and start with the darkest things first, and uh, and then I have a chance as I uh, am maybe increasing the lighter values uh, you know that I have and I need to put a little more value. Then I know that I can come back in here and get a little bit more. I don't like to go all the way though because then I take away my opportunity to show a range of value because eventually everything becomes pretty much the same color 
it'll just be all dark and I won't have a chance to really show the different levels. It's such an advantage to have control you know, over your uh, values. So then, uh, wow, we could go ahead and we could, we could put another one back here, way you know, in the back that's even lighter. Making sure that I have a clean edge to whatever value I've chosen for this mountain so that I can go past it. You have to have a clean edge to go past something. I don't care whether that's hair on your head or whether that's a rock on a mountain. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what it is. You still have to have something that has a clean edge to go past it. So see if I work with this. I can get this to be a little lighter than this one, but maybe a little darker than that one, and gradually see it uh, go off into the distance just because it usually that's the way it works. The makeup of the mountain could be different so that it could change the value, but often you're going to see your mountains get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And then we have clouds. You know, if I wanted to make the clouds a significant part of this drawing, I mean, I could go ahead and, and take some of the principles here and add my values in here, making sure, again, that I have maybe a different texture. I probably want it to be smoother having an irregularity, but also if there's an opportunity to show light direction, well, look at this. They, obviously the light is coming from above, so everything underneath is going to be a little bit darker. If I want to be able to show clouds like that, then I would do well to show that uh, there is a darker underside. It's the farthest away from the light. And, and maybe it's coming from a little bit more of an angle like this. So it looks like the right side of the clouds as I'm looking at these is a little bit brighter on this side. And then this looks like it's light because there's a darker cloud behind it. And so we have an opportunity, just like these mountains, just like putting the meadow in, in the foreground, to have all these different levels of value, even in the clouds. Now, we don't want that to be uh, misconstrued with the uh, mountains. So you'd have to work at it a little bit to make sure that there's a texture and maybe a little different, a softer edge. But there's still going to have to be some indication of a cleaner edge uh, on these clouds, or you'll never be able to separate them from what's behind. But it's still softer nonetheless. And if I can maintain my values, I'll have an opportunity you know, to uh, put contour and dimension even to these clouds. And I'm just using a, a quick diagonal stroke. You won't see me very often, even to fill in a space, uh, you know, use the side of my pencil very often. I love to use the point of my pencil, but for the sake of time, I don't think we'd be able to spend the time doing that. So I'm trying to give you just things to think about and things that give you an opportunity to develop a sketch that you can develop later but look at here. See, we can change the value. I mean, we can change the texture. So it's no longer something that could be misconstrued with forest trees or grass in the meadow or anything like that. We can have something that contrasts quite a bit and actually looks like it's, uh, you know, some kind of a misty element, uh, but still having the form. And then if we uh, can utilize the brush, we have an opportunity then to also take something out. So if I take advantage of some of this uh, uh, tone that I put in here, some of this extra lead, probably wiped an awful lot of it off, but I can come in here now and take out a highlight here and there, which also helps me, you know, create a little bit more depth by pulling out certain elements that uh, I can, let's see, let's sweep this across the road here a little bit because it looks like uh, the road probably gets lighter as it goes off into the distance as well. Probably need a little bit more value on there to be able to do that, but uh, now let, let's take this and take a little bit out of that, just in places. A little bit lighter road, you probably see it even on the, on the screen here. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of that off, because at the high point maybe it's a little bit brighter. And I would rather use a a, a value like that rather than use just a line to try to describe it. So I would probably have a tendency to put 
value and have a gradate towards that light and have maybe some other places where it's a little darker in the road and and maybe a little grain in here isn't going to hurt so we could take advantage of some of the tooth of the pencil and and create maybe a little bit more of a gravel or a rough pavement you know to this space between my fence post and the, and the road here. But once you get these things in here, these different elements, and if you're following the principles, then you're going to have something that you can continue to refine and refine, you know, like some of the grass around the uh, fence post. But what, what the interesting part about this is just like here, I'm doing this just to show you a quick element sketch here, but uh, what we're going to find is is that we can't really use a line to describe any of these uh, you know pieces of grass any of these strands of grass here we need to really go back and show what's behind it so in principle this is what you would do you would show something behind it the color choosing the color of the grass the color of the pasture and let the weeds silhouette against that I mean in the way that they're lighter than the background and so in that way, you would have the opportunity, you know, to create even more depth. As you'll see here, let's just get in close on this, on this, draw, on this photograph. You can see where we have those opportunities to maybe have something a little, light, <coughs> a little lighter, excuse me. And again, these give us opportunities to show that this is in front of the fence posts and give us a little bit of depth here and there and interest. But if you try to do this with dark lines, it's going to communicate it in quite a bit different way. So I want to find those places that are going to be able to show uh, a little darker value, say like the shaded parts right along the road here. So this is, is probably going to be a little darker. Oh, this is going to be a little bit darker. I need to zoom back out again. where it's being kind of shaded. And it will give us the opportunity to show some of the lighter parts of the uh, you know, grass and have it be effective because I'll have a wider range of value. It really isn't a very good drawing to show that, but I still want to get some of these elements in here. Maybe we can play around with it even the next time and give ourselves the opportunity to develop this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and even out some of this. And and approaching this like this, we can always add, you know, some of the detail that might make, oh, well, there's, uh, you know, a darker part of the rock coming down here. And we can add that later. We can also take out if there was snow in a few of the uh, crevices or something, we could go ahead and show a couple lighter places. But this, we can start showing some character and dimension. And yet we can have this be darker and a clean edge to separate the two. But the mountains are getting lighter as they go off in a distance and they're probably getting smaller, even though these might very well be larger mountains than what we see in the front. It's kind of like this. These mountains here are way off in the distance. Uh, and and the closer we get, you know, the more we'd be right down at the foot of the mountain. We wouldn't even see the top. And, uh, and the only reason it looks small is because they're in the distance. So we have a hard time putting it into perspective because we have this whole frontal range here. And we'd have to start looking at the parts that are going behind something so that we know that they're actually back there a ways before we start understanding uh, how much of a perspective or how much of a depth we have in this uh, particular uh, drawing. So let's go ahead and now let's put a let's put a tree in here. And it's best, I, I don't know, there's so many different ways of doing trees. And this is just again just to get something on here. But uh, it's it's probably best whatever way you're doing it to kind of loosen up a little bit 
we're not doing a real close-up of this, so there's going to be different aspects of it that are going to be, uh, you know, more branches, some openings. I'm making it up as I go, but still, you know, just getting the idea that we can have this tree you know, be part of an opportunity to show distance again. And if we add two trees, we can have something that's going to help us understand uh, a little bit more of what kind of perspective we have. Just like the fence post, the tree in the foreground would probably be much, uh, you know, smaller or much larger. But let's go ahead and go into a couple of these places and show that it goes past, you know, some of these places. There's places that are in the shade in that tree and, and we can regulate uh, this not just becoming a mass of little curlicues, uh, but we can take into consideration that there's depth and levels within this tree as well. Okay, let's let's go ahead and maybe let's put let's put one coming out over the edge of this knoll. This is off in the distance. So now we have this opportunity to show that, well, there we have that element coming out from behind that clean edge. Now we know that it's it's over over the hill. And and if we were going to put one in the foreground, uh, we could go ahead and have, uh, you know, something that the leaves are obviously going to be a little bigger. Not that those are leaves, but anyway, uh, whatever we're going to do could be on a completely different scale. And... Uh, and we can tell then that it's bigger than these. Of course, trees can be all different kinds of sizes, but still, um, we have an opportunity to show perspective by all these different objects we're going to add in. We don't want to get too, uh, you know, uh, confusing and just uh, end up by putting things in here just to uh, cause more. Uh, uh, a lack of ability to see the differences in all the elements, but uh, maybe it's covering up this. So now we know that this goes behind. We can't see it anymore. And over here, this comes out from behind. We can't, we couldn't see it as it goes behind there. So here we have another opportunity to show distance. All wonderful things that we can use to uh, communicate what we want. If I had a, a lot of time to play with this, it probably would have been maybe in a little different position. But then we can also put, uh, you know, the, some of these weeds and grass in front of the tree. Especially if we show that value coming back into uh, some of what's behind those uh, strands of grass coming up there. So we have something lighter, you know, that's helping us show a distance again. I don't know, this, I think this fence post needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe show a, uh, a dimension to it by showing a different facet. We can do that. And then if we had wire on it, it would be very thin here, and coming farther away from the ground as it comes, comes this way. Another opportunity for perspective as we see it get narrower and narrower as it goes down and away from us. Same thing as a road. And you'll find that you want to be consistent like that because otherwise you're going to end up with conflicts. If you try and establish one thing and contradict it in another area, then uh, it really wouldn't work. If I had these wires all the same uh, you know, distance uh, down here at this end, and they are here, uh, then I wouldn't be able to show that it's going off just like the road. So this, let's see. Something like that. I hope you can see it. But we could just keep playing with this and keep playing with it and, uh, and have an opportunity you know, even to show that maybe the top of this mountain goes off into the clouds. And so if we have a clean edge showing where it, it is uh, separated from the sky here, then we could end up by having maybe 
well, I don't know, maybe I'm biting off more than I can chew, but we could have this become a little bit foggy at the top and, and have something that uh, is going to help us see that we have the top going off into the, into the cloud just using our value. If the mountain is darker than the tree, which I doubt, but anyway, if the mountain was darker than the tree, we'd put more value in through a few of these branches here so that we could have uh, this, uh, you know, contrasting with that. But I, I, I want to make sure that I can always keep a separation between all of the elements. And, uh, and so if I'm, if I'm careless and I don't allow myself for a clean edge here, even though it's irregular, and if I can keep from outlining it, it's going to be far better. It's probably going to be, let's say, darker as it goes down, you know, farther at the bottom. Probably less light. We can use that principle. And the tree might, uh, you know, be separated like that. I don't know you can see what I'm talking about, but then it would get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. As it goes up, maybe we could do that. But there's all kinds of opportunities by using value and clean edges and perspective to make a very, very believable uh, scene. And it might be kind of fun for you to play around with that. Uh, we might have an opportunity to take this a little further. It'd be fun now that I've got into this. I'd like to interpret it a little bit more. And again, I, I could have maybe followed this exactly, but I'm not. And yet it still has the same principle. And I could have narrowed down, you know, uh, the end of the road a little bit more so that we, we have this uh, becoming, uh, you know, a narrower at the end so we have a more severe perspective. That's, that's something you can always modify, especially if you put the, uh, the graphite on lightly so that you can take it off. Because I should be able to take out anything. This is, the, this is what I always want to be able to do. I want to be able to take it off and make sure that I can make modifications. If I didn't like the mountain, then I can just go ahead and do that. And if I if I am uh, wanting to cover it back in, it's easy, you know, because I'm always paying attention to value and the way I put my pencil on, and I can just cover it right back up like it was never there. So it's really nice to have that opportunity, though, to correct mistakes and decide, you know, I don't really like that mountain there. I think I'm going to change it a little bit. And it's just fun to do. And to really see if you can notice perspective everywhere you go. It is everywhere you go. I'm going to put on a little bit more dimension onto this, on these fence posts here too, because they are getting very, very funny looking. They're taller, but no thicker. So let's make them thicker as well. And I might think about that later and decide, well, you know what? I think I got a little carried away with that. But we could also use, uh, you know, one side that's going to have a, shadowed side and we could have a brighter side we could use the pasture as a as a value to make this lit part of the fence post uh, separate from it or always be looking for opportunities you know to separate things with value and clean edges and uh, naturally i don't want to get too carried away with the pasture value because i want to be able to uh, separate it from that uh, the base of that next mountain that's over the knoll and, uh, and I don't want to get too carried away with this, or I won't have uh, uh, the opportunity to make this dark enough to separate it from that one. And then if I don't, uh, if I'm not careful managing my values, then I won't be able to show that there's another one off in the distance. And uh, so anyway, I thought it might be kind of fun to address some of those things. I know some of the questions you had are how to draw scenes and what do you notice when you're looking at them. And, uh, and these are some of the things. I'm always looking for the very standard principles. First of all, I'm looking for composition and design. And I think all of you probably have more of that in you than you may even realize. You may think, oh, I just don't, I wouldn't know where to do this. It's the same thing as arranging the furniture in your room uh, and, and putting uh, the things on the table nicely or arranging a bouquet of flowers. Uh, there's so many things in our life that we may put the picture on a certain place on the wall because we feel like it is just the right shape and the right value and the right place, you know, over our furniture in our living room or whatever it happens to be. And so if you cultivate that, you'll notice that you probably have a lot more uh, 
uh, talent or awareness of how to come up with things that are in great composition and balance and design than you may have ever thought. And now if you know how to incorporate you know, your uh, elements and your principles, important principles, how light works, uh, again, the, the clean edges versus the, the contours, like the soft clouds and things, uh, then you're going to be able to have an opportunity to express what you see and, uh, and make sure that it has the elements in there that make it dynamic and believable and bring you in to whatever you're drawing. And uh, naturally, that makes it a lot more fun as you draw. So that's what I hope for you. Have fun drawing. See you in the next video. All right. Well, thank you, Daryl, for your time. And thank you all for joining us. Hope you enjoy this second installment of our three-part series on drawing landscapes. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to see where this drawing ends up. So I hope you'll come back and join us in the next video. We'll be sure to send out a link to your email, and uh, that video will go live as soon as you get the link. So uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.